Then first, thank you everyone. Thanks for coming here, and appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Liang. I'm from Virtualization team. Today, I'm going to give you a topic about uh, how to accelerate your AI cloud. So it's kind of a, a continue for the from the last topic uh, uh, in the lab conference so about the GPU virtualization. But uh, today, I would. Uh, expand it a little bit more, um, not only on GP for GPU, but also for some uh, FPGA or some AI chips, this kind of uh, hardware accelerator. So first, uh, we'll give us some background about AI, cloud, AI, AI and cloud, and AI cloud. So, But uh, uh, remember that this is not a uh, totally AI session here, so I won't focus so much on how to prog program an AI application or something. We are just focused on the infrastructure level, low level, uh, how to accelerate them, how to make your environment, uh, your cloud uh, efficient. And uh, after that, we will see some update on the GPU virtualization from last year. We also see some FPG virtualization, that's new and also check on AI chips uh, and uh, their virtualization possibility. So uh, let's start. So first, AI and the cloud. Uh, cloud is a well-known concept today. I think uh, it's, known, it's everywhere and uh, it's already been used uh, so often. There's a public there, Google, AWS, Azure, and some digital ocean, lint code, and uh, I think different country also have their different uh, cloud uh, provider and uh, private cloud. VMware, then server, OpenStack, our SOC. So that's cloud. Uh, but uh, for me, the since I'm from the virtualization, so it's more like uh, QM and uh, QEMU for me. So, but also there's then there's some some container. There's so much information there, and then AI. I think uh, we've been heard so many. Some some people talk AI. Some people talk machine learning. Some people talk about uh, deep learning. What are they? Are they same? Are they different? So we'll we'll just uh, get there soon. So first, uh, AI cloud. Why do we want it? Because it's needed. There's a huge market outside, like just for the, this is the data from the Gartner report. The first is, is about the cloud market, like it's 100 billion level. For the AI market, it's quite interesting. The data is from, it's different from uh, our CTO report last, uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, he mentioned it's also 100 billion, but here is actually, trillion level, it's kind of a thousand billion. It, no, no matter how, either way, no matter either is right, it's still a big comp, it's still a big number there. 2% is good enough for SUSE. So, yeah, and uh, AI user cases, I think uh, AI is, is in our everyday life now. We have, we have seen it in auto drive, Tesla, medical care, from some uh, X-ray or MRI uh, picture, we could uh, uh, it could uh, predict uh, the the possible disease we could have finance some quantum finance. I think it's it's already been used in uh, Wall Street or kind of a stock exchange market there, and uh, electronic uh, commerce like uh, Amazon, eBay. I think. Uh, it's in our everyday life. Like uh, when you open the website, there will be a recommendation page there for you. And sometimes if it, it's, it's really helpful. And also, of course, their delivery system, they need it more efficient to, and more saving their cost. And uh, language translate. I, I believe today here we have so many language uh, speakers here. It would be, would have been, wouldn't be it nice if there's a AI translator here? So I don't speak English here. I can just speak uh, Chinese. 你们好. <laughs> and also face, image, recognition. Anyway, you see, it's been 
widely used is in our everyday life. Now let's get deeper. Let's focus on the AI. Uh, actually, AI is a quite old topic. It's from 1850s, and uh, uh, from there, it's more like to make a, you could see them from novel or movie that it's try to make it more human-like, like think like human, do things like human, and uh, there are so many ways for that. And then come to the 18s. With the mathematical methods there, it comes machine learning. They are using all different kind of mathematical, like, uh, how to say, like statics and the BS and the neural network, all kind of this information, regression, and uh, they use this math method or algorithm, we call it, uh, to analyze the data and then give you a prediction or determine a decision very like a human. That's machine learning. And uh, now, today, 20, 2010, 2010, it comes to deep learning. Actually, it's based on, it, it took the advantage of the data explode, uh, explode on the internet. So, so many, so many data there coming out, so much information. So, makes this method, this deep, uh, this method is quite uh, accurate for AI process there. And uh, that's also why it's popular. So I think uh, this picture would be more straightforward. You see, AI have so many uh, methods there, so many branches there, and machine learning is just one of them. Uh, similar for deep learning, it's also just one branch of so many. So. I think today, when people are talking AI or talking machine learning, deep learning, they are basically mean deep learning, actually. And uh, even for some framework outside, it's about deep learning. Why call it deep learning? As I just mentioned, deep learning is a branch from machine learning, which is focused on the mathematics. Here, it uses neural network. So deep, actually, it means uh, if you are familiar with the neural network, there's so many layers. And uh, the deeper you're going down, the, the good accurate uh, you could get, the result you could get. So we call it uh, deep learning. That's kind of how it comes. And uh, for this uh, deep learning, it will achieve an algorithm, not designed by human, but uh, it's uh, based on human thinking, our brain. Like uh, it we are uh, train so many data set there, and uh, eventually it will come to an uh, optimized model. And uh, this model, what it means like uh, just a function to us, like uh, x, fx equal xy plus z plus that, that kind of things. But uh, this model could be used everywhere to do your AI business. So, but uh, still, since it's neural network, and uh, that's all we care about. Like, uh, let's think it from a mathematical level. Let's think about it from a, a pr engineer level, programmer. We are all engineers here. So for us, it's kind of all different kind of neural network. Deep learning neural network, and then comes to the uh, convolution network and the recursion network model. There's a, a different model. This would be more straightforward, like a neural network. There's different layers, and uh, it will eventually come to the uh, uh, curate result. And uh, here, it also gives us th some more details about deep learning. It has two states, training and uh, inference. Training here, it uses the, the training data set. It's huge. like. Uh, gigabyte, terabyte, and then comes into this model. Like uh, it will come down, 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 and eventually go into your model. And uh, with this model, we deploy it uh, into, our, into your phone, mobile phone, or your application. With that, when it comes to new data, it will give a, a give a analysis 
very sh immediately. And then it will put this data, classified it into the right category. And uh, that's, that's the, the job done. So uh, deep learning here, I think uh, as software developer, we know, especially as an AI de developer, there are so many frameworks aside. TensorFlow, Py, uh, PyTorch, MXNet, just like, like I said, we're, we're not looking on that side. We are still focused on our low level. So uh, yes, this, they all kind of uh, ramp, I think. It's like the platform to, to like the neural network. I, it makes the neuron, it implants the neural network in different way, makes it easier for, for developers, and makes it a specific uh, help for for some specific uh, area. So th I think that's the, the reason why there are so many framework. But uh, if we see from a computer level, it's basically like uh, there's a framework there, they will eventually give, uh, going through an uh, intermediate representative, like the middle level of a compiler, if you're familiar with that. After that, they will translate to uh, the, the different uh, backend API. So it depends on your backend device. If you're using GPU, that would be CUDA, NVIDIA, OpenCL, AMD. And uh, also if you're using FPGA, that would be OpenCL. And also for all those kind of different uh, AI chips, I call it uh, ASC, we are seeing more a little bit, they will have their own API, their own software stack to make this job done. So now it's pretty clear. Our main work is dealing with the neural network. And uh, in this neural work, the most uh, important, op most often operation is uh, metric uh, multiplication. You see here, there's a couple of data and they, they do this multiple multiplication. And uh, from the code level, it's more like there is a multiple loop. And uh, in the innerst loop will do a float mul multiplication. We know float is uh, super slow, and uh, especially when it comes to the multiplication. And uh, still, keep thinking that uh, neural network, if there's so many layers, let's say thousands, uh, millions, and that there are so many parameters, so no way the traditional uh, computer model will fit them. It will be super slow you run on your CPU. That's why it comes to the hardware accelerator. So what kind of hardware accelerator we need? So as, as I just said, metric multiplication. Who is good for them? Who will be children? First it comes to us, GPU. And uh, we know GPU is really good at a float operation. And uh, also for some graphic data, it's all kind of metric. So it's a perfect choice. And that's also the reason why GPU is widely used in AI uh, or deep learning so area today. But uh, still, it's, uh, the, the operation there, the, the, the task there is obvious. Uh, there are definitely other options. All roads lead to Roma. So it comes to this FPGA, field programmable Git array. So it's kind of using your uh, program your hardware to make it uh, implement uh, uh, different uh, tasks there. And uh, with uh, uh, hardware descript language, like uh, VHDL, Verilog, that kind of language. So, and uh, just to mention a little bit more is that uh, so far there is mainly two companies outside, uh, V, Linux, and uh, Altero. Altero was just purchased by Intel. Uh, a few years ago. And uh, both support uh, OpenCL and uh, HSL. But I would uh, li like to highlight OpenCL here. That's give it ability to do the deep neural network computing outside. Also comes a lot of the AI chips. Uh, I would say it's called uh, ASC, application specific uh, uh, integrated circuits. It's more like a, 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 a 
implementation version for the FPGA. It's more like you already, the FPGA already being programmed permanently, and then comes to your this specific uh, AI chips. Uh, still, we are talking about a neural network. So this kind of uh, chips is specifically designed for uh, DL, deep learning algorithms. And uh, that's why they're need there. So uh, just have a quick look about the training interference, how they, arrange, how, how they are using that. Uh, I will give you a more detailed uh, landscape about the comment later. But uh, from here we see uh, it uh, lead to level cloud or your server side or the end user level. Maybe your laptop, maybe our uh, mobile phone there. So uh, for the training, the most important state, it is still dominated by NVIDIA because of their CUDA and their CUDNN, a new framework there. But, but a lot of company jumps out, like uh, FGA, they could do a little bit of training now, and uh, Google TPU, from the second version, it could do uh, uh, training, and especially today it's the third version, and uh, it, it could do quite well, sometimes even much better than NVIDIA GPU. Uh, inference stays there, that's wild. So many companies, GPU, of course, FPGA, yes, and uh, all those kind of AI chips, they are most, most, uh, most of them are actually using for the inference states. Because, you know, it's already there's a model there, they are just to do some quick uh, uh, classification. So that's a little bit easier for them. And uh, all different companies. Uh, later we will see a more detailed. There are so many outside. So here, again, we see this AI cloud, there's a huge market there, and uh, there is already a lot of uh, company jump to it. And uh, there's al already some companies provide this service already. Like here, those company GPU, uh, same as last year I told there, they already provide this GPU service. It's like the normal cloud. You, you just apply account, and then you create your VM. It will come with a GPU there. Um, what kind of size depends on your choice and your money, like the, how much money you want to spend on that. FPGA, FPGA is also a service now today. Uh, AW, they are using the Linux, uh, AWF F1 instance, and also some other company, like uh, China, Ali company, Huawei company, and uh, Microsoft. They don't provide uh, uh, FPGA as a service, but they are heavily using FPGA in their daily job. So, yeah, that's, that's the, steps of the AI cloud. Now we are just uh, going step by step on, on all this kind of a hardware accelerator. First, GPU virtualization. So if th that's fine if you not attend my last uh, presentation. I'll just give you a quick uh, refresh here. So first, uh, there is a simulator GPU, GPU pass through and the GPU virtualization. I'm actually talking about a GPU, full GPU virtualization here, as uh, there, which is also called a vGPU. And uh, uh, all those kind of uh, vendors, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, they already Im implemented them. Uh, and uh, for those, those kind of company, a car graphic card, Intel, it has no uh, RAM, RAM memory there, physical memory there, so it's kind of an integrated graphic card. But the thing is going to change next year. So they just announced that they are going to release a dedicated graphic card uh, next year. So we'll see. Because there's a rumor said uh, last year they will release it this year. <laughs> so we'll see next year. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> AMD, AMD graphic card is the only graphic card that uh, support IOMMU, which give it uh, the capability to use uh, SRIOV and uh, or hardware implementation. So for this patent issue, NVIDIA and uh, uh, Intel, they comes up with a software 
solution, MDEV, and uh, mediated uh, device there. But uh, since they did uh, tons of optimization there, especially on the MD, uh, on the uh, uh, on the memory, like uh, the memory remap, a uh, DMA remap, and the uh, interrupt remap. This kind of uh, uh, bottleneck uh, critics uh, uh, network there. It's quite efficient, even it's a software way. It, you can see it could come to eighty percent to ninety percent. But uh, still, it's it's not good uh, when it comes to a scalar. And uh, for this uh, GPU utilization, you could uh, run native driver. So there's no difference inside a guest VM. So it should work. It should support all the API. It could, uh, uh, the bare metal could support, like CUDA or OpenCL. That, that's perfect. And also it could uh, provide a decent uh, multiple plexing capability there. It could be used for multiple VMs. And uh, for their implementation, first uh, split. They, slip, they split the uh, time slices for VMs there, which means uh, all the VMs would uh, have the full control of the whole graphic card, except the, the memory, the physical memory, the video memory there. Other, all the same. And isolate, uh, since MDV, they use software to isolate, and uh, uh, AMD, they are using IOMMU directly for to to isolate them, so that's safe from that level. And the uh, schedule, AMD SROE is pretty good since hardware. Uh, still issue for Intel and uh, NVIDIA, but uh, they are working on it. So that's kind of uh, the basic idea on GPU virtualization. Let's see what happened uh, since last year. Mm. Honestly, there are no big. Uh, prog uh, program movement there. Most of the company focus on their uh, software stack, like uh, NVIDIA. Uh, they, they, they changed their name from Grid to We Compute Service, but still the same thing. And uh, oh yeah, NVIDIA, they are kind of a push on the inference uh, area. They released their uh, Jetson Nano, that card, I think, uh, um, if you have one. And also, if you focus on those uh, production, you'll see they dropped the price a lot. And uh, we could see like how they want to control. That's also kind of a reflect that they have threat on their training marketing there. So AMD, AMD, uh, I think they just released MI50. Uh, but mostly, they're still working on their software stack. The, they are Rock M. Read the open computer platform. Intel, besides the announcement for dedicated graphic card next year, they're also working on their software uh, stack. They call it Open Window, Open Interfer Open Viral Inference and Neural Network Optimization. I'll talk a little bit more about Intel. They had a lot of movement uh, for the last few years. They bought a lot of companies on this AI area. And uh, SUSE, I, uh, we us, like, uh, I think we're all technical ready. Uh, Intel, no customer using them. For NVIDIA, I did uh, be asked by several customers, and I also test on our uh, slate uh, production there. It could work, but uh, still we are blocked on some business level, so we still couldn't uh, get an uh, agreement. We couldn't announce it. Uh, even though Red Hat already had this agreement uh, two years ago. AMD MX GPU there, it's ongoing. Uh, they, they have their GIM module, like I just said, uh, graphic IOV module there. Uh, they didn't uh, release them, so it's not officially out there. But I did some tests too. It's, uh, it could work on i3. It's actually much easier on the uh, configuration side. So to our cloud, I think I talked to some guy during the SuseCon there. So I think we're still on GPU pass through stage. And uh, they told me the GPU virtualization code is there, but still blocked by the agreement with NVIDIA. Uh, 
For me, I like, uh, like I, I told last year, so I also tracked some like uh, the idea how to use vGPU for container. Like I said, uh, it's already very good isolated there, so it should be a very good fit for container. But uh, unfortunately, not so much uh, uh, on, uh, progress on that side. We'll see next year. Uh, so still that side is for CUDA uh, Docker 2, that side. It's on the CUDA level for all the uh, container service using. Upstream, I think, uh, uh, live migration. Uh, NVIDIA and uh, Intel, they're using software, we, so they are already implemented. Last year, AMD uh, announced that uh, they could uh, make it happen too. SRIOA, live migration, which use, uh, gives the physical function there, the ability to take a snapshot on the VF so that they could uh, uh, migrate uh, the whole vGPU to the text side. So they work with Ali Cloud and they make it happen. Others, uh, schedule, like uh, still working on that. So, but uh, NVIDIA is not uh, open source. We can't see so many. But you could uh, still find some information on the papers. Uh, like a uh, university academic area. So that's uh, GPU and the GPU realization since last year. Uh, this, now let's see FPG, that's new stuff. So first uh, people may thinking about what's FPGA. So it's actually kind of uh, some, uh, mm, if you, this is the architecture picture for them. If you see, there's a lot of uh, blocks there. They call it uh, logical blocks, or C, C block, configurable blocks. You program on that. You write, uh, uh, you write uh, your, let's say, IP, uh, the implementation with your hardware language there, and you upload them, and then it will function as uh, different uh, process core or different uh, board there. And uh, that's the idea also for uh, machine learning there. So like uh, if you, let's say if you uh, write some uh, hardware implementation for DNN, neural network. So it's good fit for that side. And uh, uh, the first one, actually it's also, it's quite old, uh, too. It's, it was first uh, introduced by the links from uh, 85, 1985. And uh, usually they are using for the prototype development for those kind of a chip company. And uh, now with the OpenCL support, it has more purpose there. And uh, uh, as I from since this is a virtualization topic, so we, s we still check on this FPGA virtualization. This idea is uh, not like the, the traditional virtualization we're talking about. It's more like uh, F FPGA stuff or say device stuff. It's like uh, FPGA, they have all the sources there, the blocks there, and uh, they, they could virtualize it uh, to, to simulate or implant the different way. And uh, usually there are three main directions, also comes with the time sequence. First, the overlay is just a, a more layer above the physical board uh, FPG. And uh, this is kind of a static way, like once you upload your, we call it a bit stream there. That's the firmware, or, or we can see firmware. Once you upload it there, it could use it as this, uh, the function you want. But uh, unless you reflex it, it will keep that way. You can do it uh, dynamically. So it's not perfect for cloud, because cloud, we, may, we want uh, multiple users using that. We want blocked. Then it comes this uh, module, dynamic module, or called uh, dynamic uh, uh, partition uh, reconfiguration. Uh, we already see that there are so many blocks there, so it can just work on regional uh, blocks there and uh, make it uh, works as an uh, independent, dedicated uh, FPGA there. So only some high-end FPGA cards outside could support it. 
ultra atherosclerosis and uh, the links ultra scale. So still not enough for us. Yes, it, it could support for multiple users, but only for one machine. Now we scale up. There will be multiple nodes. Think about the cloud. There would be 1,000 uh, machines there, maybe so many FPG cards there, too. So we need a better way to manage them. That comes this one. So resource pool. It, you can think as the FPG cloud. Uh, it uh, abstract all the resources there in one, and uh, once you apply, you lock, it will assign you a piece of a resource there. And uh, it, it also could integrate with our normal cloud uh, very good. So in that phase, it could provide uh, FPGA as a service. Uh, so Microfox, if not sure if you heard of the Catpot project, they are already using FPG for all their data center. Uh, it's the third version of this project now. There are over 5,000 uh, servers there. Over 15 countries are using that. It's quite interesting. They don't use it as a neural network, AI stuff earlier. They actually use it for a network, like to make their, it's kind of a SDN stuff there. That's quite interesting. But uh, from the third version, they're also using for this kind of uh, AI stuff. And uh, like uh, AWS, they already provide this service. It's called F1 Instance. Uh, Huawei, like the, some Chinese company there, they also provide this. Uh, it's like uh, the normal v v uh, public cloud there. You apply your VM, it will come a VM with this hardware already there. And you just, uh, program what, whatever you want. See, <coughs> Susan, so we don't work on it yet, but uh, if you joined uh, the Intel TRF a few months ago, I think two months ago, you will see their FPG route map. Also, I talked with Darren De David, so maybe uh, we are work with them on this kind of uh, FG. I'll try to get some strategic card there to do some more work. So maybe we could talk more <laughs> next year. Uh, upstream side, uh, I think uh, FPG subsystem already there for many years. Uh, a very good thing part is that uh, uh, there's a new subsystem called the Hardware Accelerator subsystem just merged a uh, few months ago. And uh, uh, you will see there's a RFC mailing list there. They linked, they're trying to contribute to their FPG driver in that uh, subsystem. At least you could see they all like uh, work together now. So, and uh, vendors that keeps releasing new hardware there, maybe there will be new functions uh, tomorrow, who knows, so. Now, let's go to the most excited part, uh, AI chips. Here, here is kind of a land keep today who works on the AI chips. There are almost 100 companies there include a giant internet company like Google, AWS, Facebook, Apple, IBM, also some, a lot of uh, startup companies on the side. I'm not sure you, but for me, I'm quite curious why. I thought, isn't a, a chip design, process design difficult? Why is it so popular today? Why so many companies could do that? So I did a, a little bit of research on that. So. If you think, you may think about that, uh, think about Intel. Intel is the only company that they could design and that they could uh, manufacture them. AMD, they only designed that, but they let uh, Foxconn to manufacture all these kind of chips. ARM, uh, more simple, they just do the IP stuff and they don't even design the whole processor. They just uh, sell them and all the other companies. That's called uh, Fabulous. But uh, furthermore, there's come to design list, which means uh, you can only work on some key po component there. Like uh, you can only work for the neural network algorithms. And you implement uh, uh, it uh, in your FPGA, and then you, you, you control your own this IP patent, and then you let other companies to do your design, and then more, let other companies to produce them. 
So that's, I think that's kind of a reason why so many companies could do that and uh, doing that. Uh, so we could still see those kind of chips mostly designed for this kind of uh, deep learning neural network, which see more the metric multiply we are, we are talking earlier, and mostly for inference. But uh, things a little bit different. I see they are started to uh, uh, compete with uh, NVIDIA, like uh, TPU, they already did it. From the second generation, they could uh, do the training. And I think this morning when I wake up, I check the news, I found uh, Huawei just announced a new one called uh, Atlas 600 based on Ascender 610. It could also doing training work. So like I said, it, there's so much change for this area. Maybe it could be quite different in the future, in the near future. So we are seeing. And uh, also, there are for most specific uses, because there are so many companies there, there's not a general platform. And uh, they just, uh, so we could call it so customized. They have their own software uh, stack there. They are focused on their own customer area, so it's quite different. So, uh, let's just take a quick look on the TPU, one of the most famous one. Uh, it uses CISC uh, instruction, actually. Complex instruction set compute. Third version today, and uh, they also, provi they also pro provide a cloud service there. You could try if you want, called uh, their Colab co collab web page there. It's still second V2 for there, and you can do some comparison between this uh, TPU and uh, uh, key 80 for GPU and some CPU. They are five theories, if I recall correctly. So here, it's the architecture. And uh, I'd like to focus on this one. There's still, multi it's called a metric multiple, not multi multiplier unite, working on that metric multiplication per operation, we are talking that. And uh, there's also uh, here, there's a unified buffer. And uh, here, it works as a uh, resist firing. There is a 24 megabyte, quite uh, big. And also, there is a activation unit there. If you are familiar with the neural network, it's a function there. So, uh, thinking about this, and uh, thinking about the GPU architecture there, so they are. They're quite thin. They are just trying to hardware implement uh, some heavy software computation there. And uh, that's, that's all. Once this uh, uh, hardware, like the uh, compute time is longer than the hardware initialization, uh, like the, the data movement mm -hmm. and the uh, hardware latency, it's, there's a meaning. For, for those kind of architecture. And also, this is their software. You see, they still need a whole sto a software stack like the CUDA there, driver API to support their the, the, uh, deep learning framework outside. So that's difficult part for them, especially for all those uh, other AI chips companies outside. And uh, here's some test result from the they provided from the, the collab. You can see some cases, it, GP, uh, TPU could even like uh, 35 times uh, GPU. That's uh, amazing. So now let's just uh, see the, let's see it from our, the whole side. So like I said, there is a hardware accelerated subsystem in kernel, it's a trend. It needs a platform for, there are so many AI chips, there needed to be a platform, general platform for all, th all those accelerators. And uh, uh, especially most of the kids they are using as ARM and uh, ISC, for example, the, the phone there. And uh, th 
even for the hardware, they need a general platform for the bus, for the connection between them. Sometimes they're using PCIe, sometimes they need to uh, use the for, yes, and uh, PCIe here, uh, I, we know that PCIe 5, the standard is released, but still they are using PCIe 3 for all those uh, hardware. And uh, PCIe 4, they're, they're going to, they're trying to transfer to 4.0. 4, uh, 4 so 3.0, the speed is uh, 8 gigabit per second. And the 4, it's a double, it is 16 gigabyte per second. I think uh, the Huawei announcement this morning they are using the PCIe 4, which makes them the, the fast, fastest uh, AI chips in the world, according to their announcement. So I think more, they will just uh, speed up other companies to transfer to PCIe 4. Other software ecosystem, like all those kind of APIs, they also need a general platform, like CUDA doing that. So going here, it's almost done. I think you are not boring, not <laughs> tired of my talk, blah, blah, blah here. Let's stop for a moment. Let's get rid of all the information I talked earlier. So let's think, uh, what are those information? Like, what's this hardware accelerator? Actually, it's kind of a heterogeneous architecture there. You are running a different uh, ISA instruction set on current uh, CPU ISA. So you need a find a way to co cooperate with them to make it your ISA or your API to working more uh, better, like the CUDA, like uh, uh, the TPU they are doing, all the stuff they are doing. So, and also for this ad hardware acceleration, it's, it's somehow kind of a hardware implementation for software works outside. Once this uh, compute load, like I said, it's, it's so heavy that the computing time is, is longer, it's higher than the normal data, data movement between, between your memory and the device memory, and also the latency costed in your uh, device there. It's meaningful, and people will do it. And that's also why those kind of things exist today. Uh, also, like uh, from the virtualization level, you will see it's not like the general virtualization, like the VT, VTX v, uh, or VTD, memory, EPT, that kind of stuff on CPU level. It's more like they're trying to transfer this virtualization to device. They, they try to let the device has the capability to virtualize, virtualize themselves. That's good. That's like, a, that's separate, it's more like the module. In the future, maybe, there's all modules there. CPU, they virtualize their device, they virtualize their, all the hypervisor, VMM, they're just a layer. They're just to use it as a data plane. And uh, that, that side, it will be so fast, much better. So I think, yeah, that, that's the mo most information will be helpful for us today to think, to, because they will pass. Like, like I said, uh, deep learning, yes, is quite popular today, but uh, it's not always. It, it's from the machine learning there. And uh, it, it, who knows, in the future, maybe it will change to others. Uh, Andrew Wu, already the, the famous uh, 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 AI expert said that, uh, already said that maybe uh, migrate uh, algorithm would be the next generation for that. So who knows? But uh, this information is helpful for us, especially for kind of uh, from the kernel level, from the hardware level. So that's the information. I, I think at least it's useful for me. So let's see. Those are folks, my, my folks. OK, it's my self folks, not my core folks. <laughs> so just. Uh, <laughs> Just from uh, engineer level, I, I believe our management level already thinks so much on the strategy. But uh, as an engineer, as myself, to-do list, maybe we can keep close on the hardware vendors. It changed so fast. This morning, a new one, new number one comes up. Maybe next day, another one. 
and maybe there's some interesting uh, functions there need us to enable it, and uh, focus on some framework back end, like uh, because that's close to the infrastructure, that's close to the driver kernel, and that would be quite useful. And also maybe some assistant work there, S like split computer task, like the GPU is thinking. So far, it's more like software to do the things, the framework to do the things, to slip all your job there, to slice, and then translate it to the hardware. Maybe the hardware could do it uh, by themselves. So we will see. And then the IO utilization techniques. Like I said, uh, there would be more and more device has this uh, capability. It's already there, like the GPU here, FPG, and the network at ROA, and uh, block device, maybe. I'm not sure, but uh, we will see. So yeah, I think that's all. I think uh, it's worth your time. You get some useful information. And uh, if you have time, if you question, please shoot. I just hope it don't be so difficult. <laughs> mm. okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, we almost have 45 minutes. Uh, one thing you may want to uh, have a look at is ARMNN, uh, which is an abstraction layer to enable uh, writing TensorFlow, PyTorch, etc., all the different uh, AIML frameworks. Um, and it can abstract it to either GPU, NPU. What's the name? Sorry, what's the name? ARM NN. ARM eh? NN, yeah. Oh, uh, ARM NN, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, that's, I recommend you, you have a look at that. Okay, thanks, um, yeah. Guillaume's already started packaging it in OpenSUSE, uh -huh. so you can at least give cool, it a try. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk to you, <laughs> to you guys. Thanks. Uh -huh. So, okay, I think that's it. Thanks for coming again. Thank you. <laughs>